Hi, Mike Kennedy with you. Got the uh, film camera out here. This is the EOS 650 that I mentioned before. Uh, I've loaded it with a roll of uh, uh, FOMO pan. It's an uh, old style film. In other words, uh, there are some people using older equipment, older coding machines, or purposely just doing things in an old fashioned way to produce the look of an old-fashioned film. I think, honestly, probably it's a, it's all old-fashioned equipment, and that's what they can do, but it finds a niche market and people that are looking for to go back to the way film once was, okay? But, so here we have a uh, film camera. We got the black and white film in it, and as I said before, the value of this camera it's certainly less than $50, and you probably could find it for $25 or less. Now, this particular one that I have, I'll have to, well, there's probably no way to access this. Some digital cameras will tell you how many exposures have gone through, but this camera is real clean and doesn't really look like it was used that much. Most cameras of this age, which is uh, around 89, uh, 1989, would be uh, really. Be, might be really used up, might be kind of beat up too. But what's interesting about this, we're going to go through a little thing. We're going to go 10 years later, okay, and now we have uh, the Canon Rebel G. So where this is a professional one, this was meant more for the average user. But I'll tell you right now, the difference in weight is amazing. This is much lighter. Of course, it's because it's more plastic construction. But you can see by the the dials here and everything things are laid out so that you can access all kinds of features now it's funny i was reading uh there's a guy named uh i'll put a link below uh ken rockwell i think it is i'll put the, the link before but he has these extensive reviews and write-ups on canon cameras and what he's mentioning with this one is how light it is and uh, how how well it works again. So now we've gone 10 years later. Then we go even further and then we get into, here's my first digital, well, good digital camera. This is the uh, Canon EOS Rebel XT. So here we have the, uh, uh, the, the first digital camera, but it's got the smaller sensor. In other words, where these are uh, 24 by 36 millimeter, these are smaller. Now what's going to be interesting about that is that uh, we're talking about backward co compatibility and we can't take these digital lenses and put them back on the film camera, but we can take the film camera lenses and put them on this. Okay. Now, uh, what's really going to be interesting is uh, Canon's going to decide, which they have recently, to make a full-frame digital camera. So now, all of a sudden, all the lenses that fit your professional film camera can be directly swapped right over uh, to this camera, to the new, this isn't the new digital, but the new digital camera, which is full-frame, where, of course, these lenses won't. So in kind of a way that if someone spent a lot of money on Canon digital equipment, They've come up with this larger format, which is going to cause you to need to, ch if you want to have everything synced perfectly, to change your lenses again. But I'm sure with a lot of photographers, if they're old enough, they would have uh, lenses of this style for the full frame. And going to this new mirrorless camera uh, would be something. And that's what a lot of the manufacturers are doing now. And uh, people might not even be familiar with that idea of mirrors and cameras but if you look at how th this camera is quite thick there's quite a bit of space between the lens and the film is on the very back of the camera okay so what's in there is a mirror and what it does is it takes the lens light from the lens and bounces it up through this prism and kind of turns it around and everything so it's right and projects it back out to you so when you look i see myself and the camera because I'm I'm filming this uh, but really when with the advent of having a screen on the back of the camera 
or uh, taking that that view and putting it in uh, to the eyepiece, the you don't really need the mirror anymore. The mirror was there to so you could see it would move up, then the shutter would actuate and it would expose the film. So you needed all the space. And different manufacturers had a different amount of space to some extent. So lenses, besides having a different mount, couldn't be swapped because there was a difference in the distance here. Well, now with the new mirrorless cameras, they're quite a bit thinner. So what you can do, and what a lot of people do do, is to get an adapter to fit certain lenses, and then they can put those lenses on their mirrorless camera. Now, of course, those, those might not work completely automatically, but again, by having that adapter, uh, you can use this whole host of different lenses that are available to for the mirrorless camera to take just stills or most of these new mirrorless cameras and a lot of the newer uh, digital, this one didn't, but uh, my, my Nikon does, will do uh, movies as well. And they do fairly high quality movies. There's even been some uh, people that have done short films that have used nothing but digital SLRs. And uh, you'll see a lot of people if they show what they're using on YouTube and different things like that, if you notice it, that fair, uh, quite a high quality uh, video, it could be that they've got a, a digital SLR that they're using with the, the uh, uh, video function. But so anyway, just an, just kind of interesting. So we're we're continuing to shoot this. I'm on exposure 14. My I went to uh, Cabela's. You'll see a video of that. I looked at some of the equipment for camping and stuff like that. And in the center of each Cabela's, I believe, at least ours, was this huge display of, of taxidermy animals, quite large ones, and, and small ones too, but including uh, a polar bear, two moose, and uh, wildebeest, uh, wolves, turkeys, skunks, uh, prairie dogs, mountain lions, different types of mountain goats, and so they've got quite quite a selection. A wolverine, uh, two types of bears, well, yeah, I said the polar bear. I believe, I can't remember now if it's a brown bear or black bear they have. They might have both. But anyway, uh, so I used, I went in and shot some things, and, and I t attempted to do, I was sticking with a 50 millimeter lens, but I was trying to crop them in such a way that you would look at it and not immediately know that it was taken inside of a store. These animals were stuffed. But the fact that they're such close views, you probably would probably gonna guess that anyway. But then uh, with the film camera, like I say, here we've got the the uh, uh, ability to switch lenses and everything. Uh, this camera, I believe someone actually gave me this one, and just kind of like, oh, we're not gonna use it anymore. We'll give it to Mike which I love that, but uh, so here, this this lens is more of the standard 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, which you practically never see on cameras anymore, unless someone actually goes out and orders it. This is more the arrangement you usually see when someone purchases a camera, be it film or now or uh, digital, and it has, it comes as standard a zoom lens that goes to uh, 28 to 80 so that is giving you with the 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 smaller sensor here, the uh, normal lens is more around 40, so it gives you a slight wide angle and a slight telephoto as well. And uh, a lot of now uh, digital cameras, when you buy it with a setup, they'll have this huge zoom lens on here uh, that does even a wider range. But you know, with zoom lens lenses, you give up some. Okay, what you can see here. If you, well, it isn't completely apparent, I shouldn't say that, but this gathers more light because it's 1.8. This one is uh, the widest it can go is 3.5. So this can take pictures and two and a half times lower light than this one can. Uh, just because of the ability for the shutter speed and how uh, still you can hold the camera. Uh, and though, of course, we're going to see with lenses as they develop for the digital, 
we're going to see the addition of not only the autofocus, but an image stabilization uh, feature as well. So then that allows you to uh, take pictures. All of a sudden you can start using a 30th of a second or maybe even less with a lens because it's going to digitally take out that, that kind of hand motion. Uh, but it probably isn't going to be as sharp as if you could take the picture on a tripod at the slower shutter speed because it's going to do some digital uh, messing around with the image a little. But for all intents and purposes, looking at it, it's going to be better. So anyway, there's a little update on this. I'm at exposure 14, and I said what we're going to do <coughs> with this roll of film, rather than me develop it, I've always wanted to try this outfit called the dark room and basically I think they went up to eleven dollars but for eleven dollars you send them any film basically they're they're different prices for different sizes but and then they send you back your developed film and a CD of all scans of all the pictures and uh, that's interesting now with a lot of people abandoned film completely and went to digital and then some people are starting to get some people never abandoned film at all but there are some people now who are combining the two because they realize they want what fi something film has that digital doesn't but they still want some of the convenience of digital so what you will see is with a lot of people they will do this and uh, some of them will develop it themselves and have if they can afford to have a decent high quality scanner they scan the pictures in themselves the problem with smaller sizes like 35 millimeter and scanning them is you have to spend more money to get a good scanner. When you're talking about some of the larger films like medium f format film, you can have less expensive scanners that will do an incredibly good job with the larger formats than with the smaller formats. And uh, But you see this, this kind of combined thing, shoot with film, scan. And uh, it's funny that one of the unique things I want to say about black and white film is how it represents the tonal range. Usually when take it, people take uh, pictures with digital and they're black and white, everything's kind of a gray. There's not as many blacks, there's not as many whites. And that's because uh, the, the, the sensors are trying to faithfully represent uh, the light values. Well, faithfully representing them might not be exactly what you want in the way that you see the image afterwards. And sometimes applying an S-curve, uh, in other words, a digital response would be straight like this. In other words, film is more like this, okay? Or maybe you want to say like this. And that S-shaped curve, if you apply that to uh, a digital image in black and white, you'll tend to find, I find immediately, that you're going to like that image better because it does things, it uh, adds uh, blacks to the photo and it adds whites to the photo and it just changes that tonal representation. Now, maybe you can say it's because I'm old and I'm used to the way the film looks, but I think that that improves it a lot. I see a lot of people on, you know, some of these different pages where they they take their negatives and then they scan them and then they present the scan on the page and really they look pretty bad and they're using really expensive equipment and it's because they don't spec spend that extra time tweaking that image and really scanning you have to view uh, just like printing in a black and white dark room or, or color dark room for that matter in other words it's a huge amount of control that you have once you have the negative, you put in the yellow archer, you get things like exposure time, contrast, different types of paper you can use, all these variables. Well, that's kind of true with scanning too. There's an incredible amount of things you can do uh, with the negative. And while initially you want might want to just faithfully represent as much of the information in the negative as you can and set that scan aside, uh, Usually you would make a duplicate of that and then you would apply uh, some uh, custom settings to it to uh, get the image to look the way you want it to. 
and the way you saw it. Uh, Ansel Adams, a famous uh, photographer, who worked mostly in black and white, he did work in color, but I think uh, at the time, I think he felt color material was too limited. I often wonder now what he'd be doing if he'd be shooting with digital, or he did a lot of work with like 4x5 and 8x10 film and things. But I think uh, his one of his big contributions, rather than just, just the, his work of art, was the zone system. And what that was was a, a kind of an elaborate way, in a way, until you got used to doing it, is to looking at the tonal representations in your in your black and white photograph and trying to place them in such a way through exposure and development that what you wanted to see or what you saw in that photo would be represented in the print. And in other words, then the photography is being a tool to express what you want to say about an image rather than just a scientific accurate recording of what was seen. And so Ansel Adams had his own system which was many many books have been written about it and uh, like I say though the idea the nutshell of his idea was pre-visualization looking at a scene and realizing how you wanted it to be portrayed in the final uh, print and so again we can kind of do that same thing with digital while looking at it and looking then we have the scan of that we have whether it's we've started with digital or we've gone through film first we have that scan that probably isn't going to be exactly uh, what we saw with with our eyes or what we perceive that we saw because a lot of times a human high is incredibly amazing it can look at things and and hone in on something and uh, a lot of other things are blocked out well when you make that final exposure and that print or that scan all of a sudden those things become really clear <laughs> so anyway long enough on the blurb but here we go more more film to come and hopefully we'll be testing uh we've got the uh we're doing some of the minox camera too as well as we go along and then uh after we try these hopefully we'll be going to uh, uh some 110 cameras and film as well have a good day bye